On this worksheet, we're gonna make some overall generalizations about the directing effect of different types of substituents. The directing effect is referring to whether a substituent is an ortho director, a meta director, or a para director. And we've seen in the previous video, we've seen that anything that's an ortho director is also a para director, and then the meta directors are just meta directors. So in the, in the previous set of videos, one of the substituents that we looked at was an alkyl group. We had a uh, toluene, so we used that as our example. This question is asking, what is it about an alkyl group that made it activating and orthopara directing? If you recall, the alkyl group allowed for a tertiary carbocation when the uh, reaction was placing the incoming electrophile in the ortho position or the, the para position. So making that tertiary carbocation in these mechanisms is what activated the, the ring towards reaction. Second question, why are alkoxy groups activating and orthopara directing? So in the example that we looked at, we had methoxy attached to a benzene ring and we saw that it was activating orthopara directing. Why are they activating orthopara directing? We don't wanna say that they have a fourth resonant structure. We wanna think about the structure of the alkoxy group. And if you recall, when we were looking at that, it was specifically the lone pair of electrons on the oxygen atom that allowed for that fourth resonance structure. So having a lone pair of electrons on the atom that was attached to the benzene molecule, that's what allowed for that fourth resonance structure. So let's kind of look again at what that structure was. Having the lone pair of electrons right here so that they could be moved into this position right here. So it wouldn't have helped us if the lone pair of electrons was somewhere further away. It needed to be on the atom that was attached directly to the ring. What about the nitro group? Um, we saw that the nitro group was a deactivator and a meta director. And if you recall from that, the reason that we gave for the nitro group was that the nitrogen atom was positively charged. And at, at some position in the, um, in the ortho mechanism and in the para mechanism, at some point in the resonant structure, we ended up with a positive charge on the carbon atom that was bonded directly to that nitrogen. So having a positive formal charge on, if we want to be really generic, not just on the nitrogen, but on the atom that is attached to the benzene, that's what made that a nitro group a deactivator and it's what made it a meta director and then the last one we looked at were halogens why are halogens deactivators but ortho para directors so the halogens we saw we used bromine i think as our example they are deactivators because they are electronegative but they have a lone pair on the atom that's attached to the ring. Well, it's kind of silly to say that because there's only one atom, but we'll just say it anyways. Lone pair on the atom attached to the benzene. So having that lone pair is what allows for uh, the ortho para reaction to take place, but the electronegativity is what makes it a deactivator. So what we're gonna do is take these generalizations, so these generalizations right here, and we are going to try to apply them to a variety of different types of substituents. We're gonna categorize these substituents as activators or deactivators, and also as, also as ortho para directors or meta directors. And I wanna go Go through you know just kind of in order of how we did this on the first page so we want to start by finding our alkyl groups alkyl groups are activating ortho para directing and if we look through these 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 are the molecules that we're working with that we want to sort we only have one i'm just going to cross them off as we come to them this is our alkyl group so that is an activator ortho para director Let's look at the second criteria that we looked at here. So in the second situation, we said having a lone pair of electrons on the atom that's attached to the benzene. And let's pick, put a note here that this is not ha uh, halogens because halogens have their own category. 
So a substituent that has a lone pair of electrons on the atom that's attached to a benzene ring, that's going to be an activator ortho para director. Lone pair of electrons on the atom attached to the benzene ring, not including halogens. Um, here's one, that nitrogen on that, um, on the lone pair of electrons on the nitrogen, that makes it an activator ortho para director. So I'm going to draw that guy down here lone pair of electrons on the nitrogen. So it doesn't matter what the atom is. Well, that's not totally true. If it's a halogen, it matters. Anything other than a halogen, if there's a lone pair of electrons on the atom that's attached directly to the benzene ring, it's going to be an activator ortho para director. Uh, let's keep going, keep going down our list. The next one, there's lone pairs of electrons there as well. And the one after that, and the one after that. Ooh, we have a whole bunch. Here's a halogen, so we're going to save that one for later. Um, so this one, this one, and this one in this row, these are all benzene rings that have um, lone pairs of electrons attached to the atom that's bonded directly to the ring. So I'm going to draw them in. There's our first one. And here is our next one. And I'm going to scoot these guys a little bit further down to make room. And the last one, right there. And then let's go down here to our last row. We have a lone pair of electrons right there. We've got lone pair of electrons right there. Three lone pairs. This guy does not have a lone pair of electrons on it. So we have two more that we can add to this list. Phenol and that last guy with the O negative, that is called phenoxide. Right there. So all of these are molecules that have lone pairs of electrons on the atom attached to the ring or an alkyl group. Those are all activators and ortho para directors. And let's go back to that first page and let's look at the next criteria. So the next criteria, this was deactivating meta directors. And we said that these are going to be molecules that have positive charge on the atom that's attached to the benzene ring. Deactivating, ooh, deactivating meta directors are going to go right here. So we're looking for atoms that have a positive charge on the atom or molecules that have a positive charge on the atom that's attached to the benzene ring. That guy right there, that's going to be our first one. I'm just going to put in our three right there. I forgot to cross that one off. That looks like that's our only one with a positive charge on it. Let's go back. Last category here, the halogens are deactivators, ortho para directors. These are going to be easy to find because they are the halogens, deactivating, ortho para directing. We've got two of them. The halogens are the only substituent that falls into this category, deactivating ortho para directing. They're kind of like their own little special case. So we have three that we have not yet categorized. Um, they are not alkyl groups. They've got more stuff going on than alkyl. In order to be an alkyl group, uh, this molecule right here, it has to be a straight hydrocarbon with no other atoms, just hydrogens or carbons. They don't have lone pairs of electrons on the atoms that are attached to the ring, and they also aren't halogens, so they don't fit into these categories, which means just by default that they must be deactivating meta directing, but they don't have positive formal charges on them, so how can we explain their categorization? Well, in addition to having a full blown positive charge um, on that atom attached to the ring, we could also also have the same type of outcome if we had a partial positive charge. So maybe it's not a full-on positive charge, it's just a partial positive charge. And if we look at this bond right here, this is a very polar bond with oxygen being very electronegative and the carbon atom being very electropositive, even though that's not really a word. That carbon atom does have a partial positive charge on it. That's not going to be quite as bad as having two fully positively charged atoms adjacent to each other, but that's still going to be a problem. So having a partially positive charge on the atom attached to the benzene ring is also deactivating metadirecting. And let's add that 
to this criteria. So a full positive charge or a partial positive charge on the atom that's attached to the benzene ring. It's going to give us the same deactivating meta directing situation. What about this guy right here? The carbon nitrogen bond, just like the carbon oxygen bond, is a very electronegative bond, a very polar bond with the carbon atom being partially positive charged. So that benzene with the cyanide group, that's also a deactivator meta director. And then last but not least, same thing down here, this sulfur atom, this is a partially positive sulfur because it's attached to that very electronegative oxygen atom. So this falls into the same category as well. It is, for my brain, it's a little bit harder for me to spot the deactivating meta-directing substituents. So I do tend to rely on, I, I know that I can find the halogens, like that's obviously easy. And I also know that I can feel confident about finding the activating ortho para directing substituents. So when I'm looking at a substituent, like let's say I'm looking at this molecule right here and I'm trying to figure out, is this an activator? Is it a deactivator? Is it an ortho or meta or para? What is it? I use usually ask myself, is it a halogen? Because that's obviously easy to spot. Is it an alkyl group? Because that's also easy to spot. Is there a lone pair of electrons on the atom that's attached directly to the ring? If the answer to all of those questions is no, then the only other option is that it would be a deactivating meta-directing substituent. So basically what I'm trying to say is that I do tend to struggle with identifying these guys. And what I do, what I rely on is ruling out the other two categories. And if I've ruled the other two categories, categories out, then I know that it has to be this one. So let's practice this a little bit, um, predicting the product of a few different types of reactions. In order for us to predict the products of these reactions, we have to know two different things. First of all, we have to know what are we actually putting on the ring. That involves us looking at these reagents and identifying the electrophile. In this case, the electrophile is the Cl+. The second thing that it involves is looking at our original molecule and figuring out if it's orthoparadirecting or if it's metadirecting. So... Um, I'm going to begin, I always begin by drawing the original molecule just the way that it is because nothing will change to the substituent that's already present. We're just going to be adding this chlorine. The question is where will it go? Um, the, and, and this one thing that gets a little confusing to students is that they they think, what do I look at? Do I look at the halogen? Um, or do I look at the group that's on the ring? What do I use to determine if it's activating, uh, or deactivating or ortho or para or meta directing? You're going to look at what's already present on the ring. You're not going to pay attention to what you're adding for a minute yet. We're going to focus on just on what's on the ring. This is not a halogen. This is not an alkyl group. There is no lone pair of electrons on this atom, which means that it is a meta director. It's the meta position to this functional group. This substituent is right here or right here. So this is where the new electrophile will go or that other position, whichever one you want to draw. And there's the product of the reaction. Let's try that again with our next example. So start by just redrawing the molecule and figuring out where is this substituent going to send the new electrophile. This is not a halogen. It's not an alkyl group but there is a lone pair of electrons on the atom that's attached to the ring. That means that this substituent is an ortho para director. Ortho para director means that one, it's going to make two products. One product is going to have a substituent in the ortho position that could be either one of these places. You can draw it on either spot, so right there. And it's also going to make a second product where that substituent, that new substituent, is going to be in the para position, so opposite the ring, right there. What are we actually putting on the ring? That combination puts the NO2 group on the ring, so we're going to put an NO2 group here and an NO2 group right here. We've got another example, one more example. So we'll begin by drawing our molecule in H2. We want to figure out where is this guy going to send a new substituent. This is not a halogen. This is not an alkyl group. This does have a lone pair of electrons on the nitrogen, which means that it's going to put a new substituent in the ortho position, either one of those spots. Let's put it right here this time. And it's also going to put in some of the molecules, it's going to put the new um, substituent in the para position opposite the ring. What is our electrophile? 
This is a friedel crafts reaction, so we're doing this guy right here, but remember that these carbocations rearrange themselves. So we're actually going to be attaching an isopropyl substituent right there and right there. All right, so let's now let's make it a little bit trickier. When you have more than one option of where to place an electrophile, like in this molecule, we have two benzene rings. Where is that new electrophile going to go? Is it going to go on this ring or is it going to go on this ring? So let's draw this out and see what we got. Now, when we have more than one substituent, we have more than one ring. This is when we consider activators versus deactivators. Activators help the reaction take place. That means that, you know, that reaction is favorable. Deactivators make the reaction harder. So when we're looking at these two different substituents, the first thing we want to think about is, is one of them by chance, an activator and the other a deactivator. And so the deactivating substituents, mm, let's see, it's easier for me to think about the activators. Activating substituents are alkyl groups, Neither of these are alkyl groups. Activating substituents are atoms attached to the ring with a lone pair of electrons. So there is an activator. This is an activator. Just because we have found the activator doesn't mean that we're done. We still have to consider this guy over here because it's possible that they're both activators, which would make it pretty tricky. Um, this deactivators are halogens. This is not a halogen. Deactivators are atoms that have a positive charge or a partial positive charge um, attached directly to the ring. So this guy over here is a deactivator. What color should I make a deactivator? It's a bad color. We'll make it, we'll make it gray, like we're graying it out. So when, the, when there are two substituents, one is an activator, one is a deactivator, the activator is going to control the reaction because the activator is happy to react. The deactivator is not, and the deactivator is not going to react or encourage reaction unless it absolutely has to. So this reaction is going to be controlled by the nitrogen with the lone pair of electrons. That means that our incoming electrophile is going to be directed by the NH group, and this stuff over here is just not even going to be participating at all. Lone pair of electrons on the atom directly attached to the ring means that it is a ortho para director. The ortho positions are here. Either spot would work. And we're also going to make some para product. And the para position will be opposite of that nitrogen. Oops, not a hydrogen. Here's the hydrogen, this is a bromine.